Hello and welcome everyone to Birdzilla.com. Today we're visiting with the fine folks at the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival in Florida. We have Nita Harris today with us. She is Executive Director of the Brevard Nature Alliance. Nita, welcome and um, hope you're having a good time down in Florida today. Well, we are and the weather is wonderful. And all I can say to everybody is come on down because the weather is going to be great later in January. This will be the 15th annual Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival, and we will be celebrating uh, our 15th event uh, at this festival. Um, to give you a little history about the, the festival, uh, it began in 1997. Uh, actually, uh, the idea came to Laura Lee Thompson, uh, who owns Dixie Crossroads Seafood Restaurant, and she and six other uh, area community leaders got together and wanted to have an event that would um, bring together not only the, the business community but NASA and the Space Center to show people that nature and space could coexist and become an economic uh, and make an economic impact on this area and it certainly has the 1997 festival uh, had 200 people, and that primarily was a birding um, event of birding teams who went uh, out for 24 hours to count the number of birds in this area. Uh, and it has the festival has grown from 200 people in 1997 to uh, at the in 2011 we had a near 5,000 people here during the six-day event. Uh, and that's people from all over the world, uh, Florida, uh, all over the United States, um, and the people also in this community who, who really support the, the festival. So if I show up um, at this birding festival, what am I going to do? Well, uh, you can uh, go, to, go through the uh, exhibit area, which is free. You can see the Raptor Project, which is free. You can enjoy the art show and art competition uh, presented by the Titusville Art League and that's free but if you want to sit in a classroom with a reserved seat or get uh, take a bus trip a field trip with a reserved seat you do need to register uh, we do have some free activities but still that involves a reserved seat so that we ask you to register for that too we will have a, a registration desk at the festival right now um, we're encouraging people to go to our website, uh, that's Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival org, and we have a very easy registration program. Um, you put in your information, uh, and uh, then you can register for your events and pay by uh, Visa, Mastercard, or Discover Card. Um, and um, <coughs> registrations have been going very well. We have a few uh, field trips and classroom uh, presentations that are filled, but we have uh, a little over 200 activities uh, that people can do while they're here at the festival. And we welcome families with kids. We have uh, a lot of things for our children to do. Um, and we welcome new birders, birders, uh, people who are thinking about getting into birding and, and wildlife watching, uh, and experienced birders. We have a a good return on people who come back to the festival each year and we certainly welcome them but we, we welcome uh, newcomers to the festival because we feel like that we have something to offer that you may not find in your community and it may give you an idea of something that you could do in your community that would be an economic impact in using your natural resources. Uh, I know that we, we've helped, uh, this festival has tried to help uh, in, a, in a number of communities uh, in the United States and, and also in a couple of foreign countries who have wanted to uh, start festivals after they have been to ours uh, and we have helped them do that um, and it has made an economic impact on their area and we, we try to stay in contact with them. Okay. So you uh, mentioned field trips. How many field trips do you have? We have, uh, I think it's 80 field trips, um, Maybe and however that some, some of the area specialty birds, and is everything on the beach? Absolutely. Or? 
absolutely. Uh, and we have uh, a, a number of, of special trips that will be going. One of them uh, is led by James Curry of um, um, Bird TV Adventures, Bird Adventures TV, uh, and he'll be looking for the uh, red cockheaded woodpecker. Mm -hmm. And we have um, uh, we have several specialty trips, especially uh, into down into the central uh, Florida area. Uh, and we have a guest with us today, Joel Reynolds, who will be able to talk to you about uh, some of the field trips and birds that might be seen. So, uh, if you uh, will let me bring Joel uh, over to the camera. He can talk to you about that. Very good. Look forward to it. Good morning, Sam. How are you? Good morning, Joel. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. I'm uh, one of the photographers there at the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival, and there's several others. Uh, and they'll be leading classes uh, to talk about how to use a camera in a more efficient way, and also leading field trips out to look for uh, a lot of the wildlife that we have here, and not only birds, but uh, we've been seeing uh, bobcat lately and a river otter as well. Uh, one of the special areas that I'll be leading a class to is to our Brevard County landfill. And that might seem like a crazy place to go, but it's absolutely uh, a gold mine as far as uh, wildlife is. And right now, the uh, wood stork and uh, black vulture and turkey vulture. Uh, and immature eagle are, are just unbelievable out there and, and of course uh, a seagull as well, all type of seagull. But That's some of the things that I'm doing. I'll, I'll be leading a class for the person that really has maybe a new camera, wants to come here, doesn't really want to learn all about all the buttons and switches and bells and whistles on the camera and I'll try to help them out with uh, that and then we'll go out in the field and uh, show how we can take some super pictures. Okay. So what kind of camera gear should I have with me if I wanted to attend that program? Well, if it's a smartphone, that's fine. If it's a point-and-shoot camera with uh, like a 10x zoom, that, that's fine also. We'll work with that. Or if you just have a brand new digital, uh, what they call a DSLR uh, camera with a large zoom, 300 zoom or 400 zoom, uh, we'll, we'll work with all of them and make uh, folks feel comfortable uh, with each and every one of them. Okay, and I don't have to be a super super birder or super camera operator to do this, right? No, absolutely not. And I think we're going to have fun together, learn more about each other, and uh, some of the things maybe we've learned with our cameras uh, or with our point and shoots or with our uh, uh, single lens reflex cameras and uh, just share with one another and uh, go from there. Very good. All right. Look and, forward to uh, doing that. Okay, and that's great, and I think we can talk about uh, kayaking a little bit now. All right, that might. sounds exciting. Hi, Sam. I'm Mike, uh, the owner of Adeo Way Kayak Tours, and we've been working with the festival for about six years now. And if you want to see birds from the water, I guess I'm the guy to talk to, except for the pelagic trip that goes out on the in the far water where we, where we wouldn't venture with a kayak. But we have three different ways for you to see birds. Uh, one is just kind of slinking along with a kayak, which is a great way to not disturb the environment and get close to birds. And then uh, we also have motorized kayaks for people who are not so physically endowed that they want to really challenge uh, themselves physically. Uh, motorized kayaks, uh, Joel actually went out with us a few weeks ago and you can take the motorized boat and uh, just really spend time photographing without having to worry so much about a paddle and kayaking. So we also have electric motor? Boats. I'm sorry? Is electric motor? It's electric motor on the back of a kayak. So it's very quiet. Like a trolling motor from a bass fisherman. Act exactly. And uh, you don't hear it at all. You feel it a little bit, but it just uh, kind of glides you up. And uh, we discover we were under a tree with about... Uh, 15 roseate spoonbills, and uh, we never even disturbed them. In fact, we didn't even see them until we were under the tree. So uh, it's a great way to get out and uh, sneak up on them. All right. Sounds exciting. As soon as I get in a kayak, I'm going to roll over and be upside down, not do an Eskimo roll. <laughs> I'm going to be stuck in the kayak and not get out, and I'm going to drown. You know, that's, that's what a lot of people think kayaks are, but 
the kayaking that we do in Florida is not the real thin Eskimo style kayak. It's a wider boat, it's open, and you're not going to find yourself upside down in the water. Okay. I can promise you that. It's rare that we have anyone fall out of a boat. That's good. So what kind of birds uh, might we see? Any, any more uh, specialty kind of things in Florida? Well, I don't know what you'd consider specialty. We have the Rosiette Spoonbills, which are great. Uh, we have a group of white pelicans that for some reason stayed all year last year. They don't normally stay all year, but they stayed out on one of the rookery islands that we go to. Um, we have a great rookery island that has, I don't, I can't even tell you how many birds that nest. And we do a sunset tour that uh, is phenomenal because you're out there at sunset and when there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds coming into the island at sunset. And it's just uh, an incredible thing to watch as this island basically gets covered up with birds as it gets dark. Well, so, so, uh, sounds exciting. And you say there are like three different choices of field trips? With, with us, we have a pontoon boat for people who really uh, want to just sit back in a chair and uh, maybe set up a tripod. And uh, they have a little more gear than you'd want to take in a kayak. And then we have the motorist kayak, and then we have just basic kayaks. So... That sounds exciting. Looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it, too. Thanks, Sam. Uh -huh. Thank you for your time. Okay, Netta, if we uh, have uh, non-birding people down there with us, if my wife's not a birder or the kid's not into it, is there anything to do locally? Absolutely. There's a lot of things to do. Uh, I will confess to you, Sam, I am not a birder. Okay. This is Marcia Gedke. She's president of our Chamber of Commerce. Hi, and she can tell you about a lot of the things to do in the community. What do you want to know? If what? you are coming uh, and, and you don't want to uh, take a field trip or, um, you know, go to the classroom or learn how to use your camera or well, any of those kinds of things. Well, let's say, let's, let's start at the beginning since you're with the, with the chamber. So birders want to know, okay, now I've learned a little bit about, uh, about the birding area. So where do I mm -hmm. stay and where do I eat? Where, where do you stay and where do you eat and where do you what else is there to do so we have uh, a lot of fabulous hotels we have a small bed and breakfast uh, that's available and uh, so there's lots of opportunity for um, accommodations we also have some short-term uh, condominium rentals and those kinds of things so uh, you won't have trouble finding a place to stay close to the festival right. is that information uh, on the website or your chamber website Certainly the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival website has information. You can also visit the Chamber website at Titusville.org okay. and uh, go to our directory and find lodging and accommodations and restaurants and attractions and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So there is uh, the name Space Coast. Does that, does that indicate anything nearby by any chance? No, we just picked that out of the air. Actually, yes, uh, the Kennedy Space Center is right next door to our community. We are the closest community to, uh, to the launch pads, and so we have a rich history of space exploration. And actually, that's how we got the Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge and the Canaveral National Seashore is because of NASA's uh, influence in coming into the community and preserving that uh, property. So you can go to Kennedy Space Center and uh, see all kinds of wonderful exhibits. You can even ride the shuttle launch experience. They have some environmental tours, some then and now historic tours. Um, and we're also becoming very well known for the number of museums that we have in the community, whether you want to know about local history or you're interested in aircraft. We have a wonderful Warbird Museum. Um, we have the American Police Hall of Fame. So uh, if you're interested in uh, public safety and those kinds of things, we have a wonderful tribute to the men and women who have uh, committed themselves to protecting our communities around the country. Well, sounds like a great place. Yeah, so, you've got all kinds of stuff to do. All right, so as a member of the Chamber of Commerce, you can guarantee us, what, 75 degrees and sunny every day? We have our we have already put in our uh, our request for Chamber of Commerce weather, so um, you know the uh, the good thoughts and wishes and prayer circles and all those kinds of things are going on as we speak to make sure that you've got fabulous weather when you come down here for this festival. 
right, very good. I have a couple more questions for your compadre there. You got it. You want to talk to Nita? Okay, here okay. I am back at camera range. And you know, one thing that I didn't mention, and but you may want to ask your questions first, is that I didn't mention who our keynoters were going to be. And uh, Richard Crosley is going to kick off the keynote on Wednesday evening. Uh, Paul Basich um, from the uh, um, Birding Community eBulletin will be on Thursday evening. Uh, James Curry of uh, uh, we'll be here uh, for Friday evening and Victor Emanuel will round out the keynotes on Saturday and we're just really excited about having all four of these gentlemen to bring us a diverse uh, diverse information about uh, authorship TV uh, history of, of touring uh, and Paul Basich uh, in his e-bulletin e information. Okay, so we're so, really excited okay. about that. All right, so we still haven't said exactly when this event's going to occur. I'm sorry. I thought I mentioned that at the first. It's January the 25th. Starts on Wednesday, January 25th. And uh, ends on Monday the 30th with the Pelagic trip. Uh, we will be at Brevard Community College mm -hmm. Uh, the Titusville campus, uh, the 25th through the 29th, and then we always end our festival with the pelagic trip, and the East Coast pelagic trip is really phenomenal. Not only do you see outstanding birds, and uh, as an example, last year uh, uh, a pelagic tripper got 10 life birds, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also saw right whales, uh, humpback whales, uh, turtles, dolphin, uh, you know, a lot of sea life that you might not ordinarily see. Um, but every, you know, everything cooperated last year. So, um, well, I'm sure it'll be the same this year. All right, well, yeah, and so, we hope so. How do, so how do I get to Titusville? Well, you can get to Titusville by driving, of course. Come south on I-95 or north on I-95, wherever you're coming from. You can fly into Orlando. You can fly into uh, Daytona. And we have a wonderful, wonderful airport in Melbourne, Florida, that you, if you fly into Melbourne, you probably would get some kind of discount, depending on where you're coming from. But you need to make your reservations now because... Uh, the the uh, uh, best discounts, I think, are between now and, and right after the first of the year. Okay. And as Mark said, we have uh, a good restaurants uh, and uh, good accommodations. All of that is listed on the festival website. That's Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival dot org. Uh, go on our website and, and take a look. Uh, everything is there. All the information. Uh, and if you have a question, all you have to do is just call us at 321-268-5224 or if you're out of Florida, 800-460-2664. And we will have, our, our exhibit area is completely filled now. We have 84 uh, exhibitors and as part of the exhibit area, the Raptor Project will be on the stage. Jonathan Wood and his fabulous birds are coming back this year. Uh, they're with us every year, and it's such an educational program, not only for adults, but children also. And Jonathan and uh, Rainier Mungia is doing a, something a little bit different this year uh, as far as photography and showing the birds. They're having two special uh, photography uh, presentations uh, that will be with the raptors, uh, it will be you'll be able to do up close uh, photography of the raptors where the birds are sitting or flying or whatever, and these birds are phenomenal. Uh, Jonathan has had these birds uh, at different uh, presentations, different uh, venues, and I swear these birds actually pop pose for you. It's just out outstanding. So anyone interested in close up photography like that, it's an opportunity that we haven't offered before. Okay, that sounds great. 
Well, thank you very much for your time. I will be there, as you know, and we look forward to seeing you again and uh, visiting Dixie Roadhouse for some fine food and uh, all the great birding. Well, Sam, we look forward to having you and your gang come aboard, and uh, we look forward to seeing everyone. Uh, and again, if you have any questions about the festival, you know, you can give us a call. You can email us. The information is on the website. But I, I do think that... Uh, our website is so fantastic and so easy to navigate. If you go to Space Coast Birding and WildlifeFestival.org, it'll give you all the answers to your questions and excite you about coming to the festival. All right. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you Thank soon. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.